August 6, 2013. Will the clerk please call the roll? Sam Crawford. Here. Ken Mann. Here. Bill Knudsen. Here. Kathy Kirshner. Here. Barbara Brenner. Here. And Pete Kremen. And Pete Kremen, sorry. Here. It's usually in this same order. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe, maybe I should raise my seat. <laughs> That's right. We all have to pay attention. <laughs> Was that alphabetical by first name? Oh. <laughs> she was. Good night. All right. Will everybody please Change stand and join me in saluting the flag? Oh. And I will um, remind everybody to please put your cell phone on silent mode. And if you've got anything to hand to council members, if you'd also please give a copy to our clerk down here at the desk for public record, that would be appreciated. All right. We had a committee of the whole meeting this afternoon, and we had an update from our consultant DLR group on jail planning. And... Um, there were three important pieces of information that came out of that meeting this afternoon. One is that the um, studies have shown that there are no contaminate, contaminants on the um, piece of property that we're considering. There are also no archaeological um, items of significance on that piece of property. And there has been... Um, Further study on the number of potential beds that we may need, and it looks like we're looking at about 521 with the potential to add 100 in the future if needed. So I think that summarizes what we heard today, and um, we really appreciate them coming to give us that update. Let's see. We have one public hearing tonight, and it is a public hearing on the Community Development Block Grant closeout, and this is Opportunity Council's Housing Rehabilitation Project. And it looks like we have one person signed up, and it's, is it Wade Gardner? And Wade, were you planning to speak on the, on that? Oh, okay. Wonderful. So does anybody want to address the council on this or during this public hearing? Nobody? Okay. Well, then I'll close the public hearing and I will ask what are the wishes of the council? Move to approve. Councilmember Crawford moves to approve. Councilmember Brenner? Um, I do have at least one question. Um, if you could come down here, that'd be great. So as you're walking up, Wade, if you'll state your name for the record and up on the oh, microphone. The microphone. We record everything on the microphone. All right. Wade Gardner. Okay. Wade Gardner. <laughs> we know now, don't we? Okay. Who are you? <laughs> uh, well, I'm just curious. What is, what is the Opportunity Council consider moderate income? Moderate income is up to 80% of area area um, median income which is well so for a family of four 80 percent of 53,000 area median income is around 53,000 so it would be 80 percent of that okay all right huh which is 40,000 well you that's there good. we go okay and <clears throat> it had two examples um of people who have been or families that that have been helped um, do is there a prioritization when it's more than just income because both of these families had more than just an income uh, issue one had a hand, physical handicap and the other had a, a mental handicap so do you look at I mean we we, um, we prioritize with our with our seniors um, folks with disabilities folks with children six and younger um, Native Americans are on our priority list. Hmm. I can't think of that the other one, but helpful. there is there is five. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. That was just me. Questions. Any other questions for Mr. Gardner? All right. Thank you for coming tonight and being able to answer questions. And I didn't ask if there was a staff report, but I'm not seeing that there is any staff probably that would give a report on this. So, All right. Council members, any other questions on this? All right. Will the clerk please call the roll? Oh, wait. This is Actually, there's no action needed on this. We yeah. just are required to hold a hearing. Right. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'll withdraw <clears throat> my motion. Thank you. So we've completed that task. All right, so that takes us then to the open session. And during open session, uh, audience members have got up to three minutes to address the county council on any business related to um, county business. Before beginning to comment, please state your name and topic of interest for the record. If your last name is complicated, please spell it for the clerk. And you can go ahead and line up in the aisles behind the signs. And we'll start with whoever wants to go first during open session. Come on up. My name is Lee Blake. I'm a lifelong resident of Whatcom County and a former employee of Ferry Brothers. Um, I've watched the last meeting on TV and where you guys have dropped the square footage down. The whole thing is, is that Ferry Brothers killed 300 plus in a 10 hour period, okay? I don't believe that the USDA is gonna allow you to kill other animals and put them in the same cooler. So Ferry Brothers is a great model for what you guys are trying to do. I've talked, I work for Don Monks that raises beef. And when I told him what the council was trying to do, he laughed. Because as it stands right now, all the beef farmers in Whatcom and Skagit counties have to send their beef to eastern Washington. It's costing them thousands of dollars in shipping. If they were allowed to bring them to a facility big enough, then that's going to create tax revenue for the Whatcom County and full-time jobs. You have to understand that there's a difference between a butcher and a meat cutter. There are two different skill sets. I'm a journeyman butcher. It would take me a two-year apprentice program to become a meat cutter, to be able to work in a market to cut meat. Two years. There's not enough meat cutters in Whatcom and Skagit County, period. It's, a, it's all of them that I know all work in the local grocery stores right now. I worked on those kill floors with those guys. The operation's too small. If, if Don Monks decided to bring up 100, 100 head to have him killed, 7,000 feet's not going to get it done. We killed on an average 70 head of local dairy cows. But to put it together, you don't have the cooler space in 20,000 feet and a kill floor and a place to bone and package the meat, period. I worked alongside Mick Ferry. 30 seconds, please. All the way up to his retirement. I spoke to his son. He laughed as well. You're not going to be able to kill sheep, pigs, and everything that have the space. That's my opinion. And that's coming from the inside. I'm going to leave business cards with my name, my number, and any one of the council members who want to know more because I, don't ha I can't do it in three minutes. Feel free to call me. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Humphrey Blackburn. I live in Custer. I have a business which manufactures and distributes proprietary water treatment systems for small communities, agriculture, and industry throughout the United States and in more than 20 countries, mostly in the developing world. I also consult in, in, in excuse me, to industry, uh, NGOs, relief organizations, and state and federal 
government or um, on water treatment. I'm also a peer reviewer for small business innovation research grants with the EPA. Throughout my work, um, I'm exposed every day to global water concerns and initiatives. There is a tremendous amount of focus and energy on a global scale concerning diminishing water resources and increasing problems with contamination of available water resources. In Whatcom County, we're not immune to these global forces. Well-documented declines in snowpack and glacial retreat require us, I repeat, require us, to look carefully at water use and plan for the future. Coupled with these declines, estimated to result in up to 40% reduction in Nooksack summertime flows by 2060, are new industrial proposals for rural areas that will draw large amounts of water for, for use from aquifers and rivers without recycling the water and or producing released waste streams containing such things as nitrate, copper, beryllium, aluminum, and mercury, to name a few. We need leadership and vision to establish priorities for water use and provide protections for our available finite water supply because the result of doing nothing is higher and higher expense to treat water and risk to public health. To protect the community they serve, the Council must place protection of our precious water resources above commercial interests when considering industrial proposals in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Yoshi Ravel. Uh, thank you to members of the audience, staff, and county council. I come to speak uh, this evening to you about health care. Uh, I recently read about a study showing that um, people that are overweight have twice the risk of Alzheimer's and people that are obese have four times the risk of Alzheimer's. So in addition to um, risks of diabetes, increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, there is the increased risk of Alzheimer's for people that are overweight and obese. Two of three Americans, adults, are overweight or obese. One third of our children are overweight or obese, and I see no reason to think that Whatcom County is any different in this statistic. Um, this is a health care disaster that is waiting to happen, and I would ask that the county council do what it can to help us um, go on a weight loss program. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, and I wish you all a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, and thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak. Uh, you all are dressed appropriately because I'm going to talk about the Blue-Green Coalition, and all of you Me. have on either blue or green, or some of both of you have some of you have both of those colors on. So thank can, you for uh, helping me with this. Can uh, you state your topic. name for the record, please? I can. My okay. name is Brooks Anderson, and I've been here before, but not recently. So. Again, thank you for the opportunity. So the Blue-Green Coalition, have you heard about it? How many of you have heard about it? One of you. Well, I hadn't heard about it until last night. And last night, I went to this uh, Bellingham City Council uh, meeting, and the coalition filled the auditorium with their um, request about the waterfront redevelopment. So people from this coalition um, are four organizations. Two of the organizations are considered labor, and two of them are considered environmentalist. They agreed that the two focuses, which some have a history of pitting against one another, jobs versus environment, business versus environment, um, they agreed that these two focuses were not in opposition to one another, but in fact, worked together with one another. The idea that they're in opposition and that they don't help one another is a very outdated idea, and it's not true. Most big corporations at this point in time have learned that the economic bottom line is improved if it includes the environmental and community bottom lines. Last night, speaker after speaker said, we are in agreement insisting on living wage jobs at our waterfronts redevelopment that provides a sustainable habitat of connectivity for salmon, 
crab, birds, and other wild creatures in harmony with citizens and their businesses. The waterfront plan needs to be a balance that will sustain our existing businesses, sustain our existing businesses, as well as new businesses appropriate to our city and county. Do watch, all of you please, the TV repeat of last night's meeting. If you, I guess, can you don't need to because you know seconds, about it. Thirty seconds, please. Do watch it at the of, of last night and see how these people from two what would some would say were opposing camps are working together for good jobs for local people at our re redevelopment waterfront. Some people there estimated there would be 6,500 jobs created in the waterfront redevelopment of living wage jobs if we do this right and continue to attract new businesses that want you to do business in our gorgeous environment. It's a much brighter Time. future for Whatcom County. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, am I out of time? You are. Oh, darn. Can I just say this last thing? One sentence. Uh, or hand it out to us. I mean, you don't have that many people here, and there's not that many speaking. Go Can ahead. I just finish? Go Thank ahead. You. Okay, so we must be moving forward to a more united Whatcom County, not Bellingham and the county, but all of Whatcom County. Not labor and environmentalists, but all people of Whatcom County. Not water for drinking or industry. Not water for lummies or farmers. Water for all Whatcom County. We're going to vote in the next election, not for progressives or conservatives, but for all Whatcom County. Embrace the principles of the Blue-Green Coalition. This election is going to elect those of you who are not stuck in representing just one aspect of Whatcom County, but are going to apply their skills to working for all of Whatcom County. The time has passed that anybody can be biased and represent only part of Whatcom County. The Blue-Green Coalition has risen above the unsustainable dated belief that it is jobs versus environment. It is not either or, it's both and. So here's to more coalitions, whatever their colors might be. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next speaker, please. Yes, hello, my name is Mary Ross. I live on Lummi Island. And I just wanted to make a really brief statement that tonight you're gonna to be considering um, number three in the introduction items, um, the ordinance amending the Whatcom County Unified Fee Schedule to incorporate ferry non-payment fees. Um, and its proposed schedule is a September 10th Public Works, Health and Safety and Safety Committee and Council public hearing. I would like to, on behalf of the citizens of Lummi Island that I have talked to and I have read some comments on a lot of our web pages and stuff, there's a lot of people that are very concerned that this public hearing that really will influence us mostly is being held during dry dock and it's very difficult for people you know, for your constituents to make it in, and dry dock is enough of a pain as it is, um, but to be able to get in, some of us choose to stay on island during dry dock to not exacerbate the, the parking problems, and so getting off and getting into town is difficult for us. So I would just like you to please consider reconsider reconsi scheduling the public hearing for October instead of during dry dock. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Greg Brown, Whatcom County, um, speaking to the ordinance amending the ferry rates. Uh, I've spoken at this a couple of times in favor, promising a letter from the advisory committee. I think you got a letter today from Mike, so uh, which is contrary to what we had said earlier. And this is my input to that today. And the second item of this ordinance states, the ordinance amendment also includes language to clarify the specific state funding included in the calculation is ferry death reimbursement in an effort to reduce confusion. Per already existing ordinance, AB 2005-094, or the ordinance establishing the new Whatcom County Ferry Fund System, there is no clarification necessary. This ordinance state, Whereas the revenue generated by these fees, together with certain designated funds received from the state of Washington, must be used by the county exclusively to operate the ferry system. 
and whereas the balance, if there ever was one, of revenue necessary for operating and improving the ferry system is from various federal and state grant programs in the Whatcom County Road Fund. Also, RAC, RIC, WAC, RCW, distribution of statewide fuel taxes states for distribution to the Puget Sound Ferry operations account in the Motor Vehicle Fund and account equal to 2.3283% stated. Also, per the WAC definitions, county ferry definite reimbursements, capital improvement funds, the department is authorized to include in each agreement a provision for the distribution of funds to each county to reimburse the county for 50% of the deficit incurred during each previous year in the operation and maintenance of the ferry. And, as definition, the annual physical year operating and maintenance deficit deficit is defined as the total operations and maintenance expenditures less the sum of the ferry toll revenues and that portion of the fuel tax revenue distributions which are attributed to the county ferries determined by the department. So please vote no if they, when this comes up and or minimize or correct or pass on it to include these sections already stated in the law. There should be no confusion. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker please. Good evening. My name is Ray Barabo. B is in boy. A R I. B is in boy. E A U. My dad bought a lot of vowels. <laughs> what I want to thank you for, Council, is the open meeting for getting updates on the jail process. The fact that you're willing to schedule time once a month or so to find out how that process is going, how uh, executive. Laos and his uh, working group are making progress towards the goals and the timetable they've set out. It's a real pleasure to know that so far everything that I can tell between here and the city of Ferndale has been open and public. The one thing I'll mention uh, is the issue of size. You're going to hear a lot of railing and screaming even for 521 beds that was initially proposed today. My almost 40 years in Washington State has shown me that people of this state tend to undersize things. In their effort to be minimalist, they undersize things and then a few years later go, oops, we should have built it bigger. So be careful because oftentimes what seems like the right size in June may be undersized in November. Okay? Now you'll hear me state this again a few more times as we go through the process, but I wanted to plant the seed tonight since we've heard our first number. So thank you for your time, thank you for your interest in the process, and I hope it all comes to fruition and we open a jail 2016. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, Rayma Blake from Lummi Island. I'm here to concur with what Mary Ross suggested, that having a public hearing on the ferry non-payment fee ordinance that's being introduced tonight, having that public hearing during dry dock doesn't make sense. It's a hardship and won't get you a fair, uh, fair comment on that. And I think more importantly, the timing of the introduction of that is, is off, that it's premature, that you shouldn't you shouldn't place a penalty in place until the ferry can accept credit cards. In today's culture, a lot of people don't even carry a lot of cash, and if they're caught by surprise or don't have enough, it really doesn't make, sure, make sense to place a penalty on for non-payment at that point until you can also say, yes, I will accept a credit card. If I understand correctly, uh, Mr. Abart has a pilot project in, at least envisioned for later this year, and I would uh, anticipate moving the dates on this ferry non-payment fee until after that credit card project is in place. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing nobody else standing for the open session, I will close open session, and we'll move on to our... Consent agenda, Council Member Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. We had eight items in our consent agenda. All eight items 
We're recommended for approval with a uh, two to zero vote. Carl Weimer is absent and out of town today, so I move approval of the consent agenda, items one through eight. All right, Councilmember Brenner. Um, I'd like to remove item number four. All right, so we will consider items one through three and five through eight in the consent agenda. Any comments on those items or questions? Um, what's number eight, one of the packets? Number eight was the... Uh, Pink. There was one of the Olympic Security Services. Olympic Security orange Services, orange. yeah, and the orange one you've got right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Seeing no questions on the consent agenda, items one through three and five through eight. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Those items pass seven or six to zero. And number four. Council Item Man. number four was an approval for the county executive to use Washington State contract to purchase a replacement brush cutter from PCI Waste and Recycling <laughs> Equipment in the amount of $86,346.01. This had a 2-0 recommendation for approval. I move approval. Councilmember Brenner. Um, when it was in committee, I specifically asked for information as to what was wrong with it, what, you know, why we needed to replace it. I got, I think it's like 19 pages of engineer doublespeak. I can't even understand it. There was nothing in here that gave me the specifics I was asking for, although maybe buried in here. And if anybody wants a copy of this afterwards, I'd love for you to have it. It's teeny tiny print, and it's 19 pages. And I asked several people if, it, if they understood what it meant, and they didn't. So, and I am a layperson. I'm not an engineer. So I'm not supporting it. Um, it just seems like we could have had some fairly simple, specific answers as to why it needed to be replaced and what's the problem with the one we've got. Is there, is there a staff person that wants, do you want a staff person to explain what this is? Uh, they can explain it, but now okay. I'm going to, I need, yeah, come on down. Mr. Abart, uh, Director Abart, uh, I'd like it explained, but there's 19 pages there and teeny tiny print. Frank Abart, Public Works. I was not here for your request, right. but it's my understanding you asked for the maintenance records. And, no, okay, I didn't say that. I said what I know. I was very general on. Okay. It does look like this is the maintenance records. Councilmember Crawford? Yes, what the maintenance record says very plainly is that we spent $42,000 on this piece of equipment in 2001. We have now spent $76,000 in maintenance in the time period since then, and it is prudent to replace it. This is pretty obvious. Councilmember Kremen? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the question was posed by Councilmember Brenner earlier today, and the executive uh, responded with what I consider to be a, a very common sense and uh, prudent uh, response to the question, and to the question posed by Councilmember Brenner. And the gist of the response was that uh, the um, the unit is 12 years old. It's the only one we have. And I think there were a very high number of hours that it's utilized on an annual basis. I forget what the number of hours was, but it was extremely significant. And maybe uh, Director Abart may be able to provide that number, but I, I know that it was, a, it was very significant. What was it, 750 hours per year for 12 years? And so it's time to uh, replace it uh, because it actually is more cost effective to do that than to continue using the current one at, with, with the mounting maintenance costs. Okay. Councilmember Brenner? Well, it's nice to know how trusting the council is, but we're not. 
I mean, I trust but verify, and this wasn't, this isn't something I can even do that with, and we weren't given much information, and we're always told, oh, it's in terrible shape, and I've, I've known people who have bought those things at, this, at the county's auction, and many of them, according to people who are in the business, have said they're excellent, they're in excellent shape. Um, it's my job to look into it, and I can't do it when I get information like this. And I refuse to just, oh, well, the executive said. Um, I think he's a great guy, but it's my job to know what I'm voting for. Okay, any other comment on this item? All right. All those in favor of item number four, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right, that passes five to one with Councilmember Brenner opposed. Also in finance, Madam Chair, we had an ordinance amending the Whatcom County budget, the ninth request in the amount of $1,020,000, $20,100. This had a one-to-one -one recommendation for approval, so for purposes of a vote here this evening, I move approval. All right. Uh, are there any discussion item or questions on this item? Council Member Mann? I was the one vote against, so I feel like I should explain why there is $780,000 of economic development money in here for Nooksack's water treatment plant. I have great affection for the city of Nooksack, but paying for a water treatment plant is something that cities should do for themselves and not rely on county economic development dollars, so I can't support it. Councilmember Brenner. We have an economic development fund that is very specifically to be used to assist in economic development. Um, I've seen this with when the other cities requested it, and I feel it's appropriate here. We are saying growth go there. That's what we're telling the cities to do. And I do think that um, it's, it's a good, it's a good um, solution to assist instead of just dumping everything on them and say doing what the state does to us and what the feds do to us, giving them an unfunded mandate. So, Councilmember Crawford, I agree with Councilmember Brenner. That, and not, uh, to take it a step further, the fund can only be used for public works infrastructure projects, and it can only be applied for by municipalities. It can't be used by the private sector. So, the, you know, this is uh, I, I, I guess it's a glass is half empty, glass is half full kind of thing. But I see this is the perfect project for that. Councilmember Kremen. Um, Councilmember Crawford pretty much said exactly what I was going to say. I'll just add that the city of Nooksack has yet, to my knowledge, received any significant funding from the what is a portion of the rural sales tax that we dedicate into the EDI fund. And, and as Council Member Crawford said, it, this money can only be used for public facilities and public infrastructure, which is what this water treatment plant is. So I think it is a, an appropriate and prudent uh, appropriation, and I'm going to be supporting it. All right. Any further comments on this ordinance? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sam Crawford? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Bill Knudsen? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? No. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Okay, that passes six to one. Councilmember Mann opposed. Item number two is an approval for the executive to enter into a national estuary program grant agreement between the County Flood Control Zone District and the Washington State Department of Ecology for the Birch Bay Priority Stormwater Retrofit Projects pre-design in the amount of $94,750. This is a recommendation for approval to the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors. I move approval. And did you have a two to Oh, yeah. Zero vote? Well, that was two to zero with uh, Weimar absent. Okay. Is there any discussion on this item from council members? And we are acting as the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors. So seeing no discussion, we will take a, a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes 
six to zero. And did I say the previous item, item number one, passed five to one? I think I said six to one. So correct that for the record. And any other time I've already said that tonight. Anyway, okay. All right, item number three is from our Planning and Development Committee. Council Member Knudsen. Yes, on the Planning and Development Committee, we had two items. Uh, first was an ordinance amending Whatcom County Code 21.05.039, phasing, expiration, and time extension for preliminary long subdivision approval. That came with a three to zero recommendation, and I move approval. All right, is there any further discussion on that item? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ken Mann? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Bill Knudsen? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. All right, that passes six to zero. Next on the docket was an ordinance amending Whatcom County Code, County Zoning Code 20.80.630, stormwater and drainage relating to water quality and stormwater management in the Birch Bay UGA. That also came with a 3-0 recommendation, and I move approval. All right. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sam Crawford? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Bill Knudsen? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. All right. That passes 6-0. to zero. The fifth item is an ordinance amending Whatcom County Code Chapter 10.34, Ferry Rates, Proposed Amendment Changes, the method of calculating the 45% road fund subsidy of the ferry operations expenses. Sir, what are the wishes of the council? Council Member Brenner? Well, I'm not going to move approval. I want to refer this to the Public Works Committee. So you're making a motion to refer to the Public Works Committee? Yeah, for October, because uh, I'd like it to be after dry dock and people from Lummi Island can be at the meeting. This is not the same issue as what was spoken to, but this, I don't even remember. I was a little confused by the wording, and I don't remember it being, I, mean, I know we've discussed it before, but um, I don't remember it being in committee. Maybe I'm not remembering right. Yeah, it was that May 7th. It was introduced on April 23rd and in your committee on May 7th. Really? Mm -hmm. Go I to don't page 245. 245, okay. I was just and I believe we held it um, oh, I'm so sorry. we could get... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I apologize. Go ahead, Councilmember Crawford. May 7th Crawford. was the full council meeting that we moved it to your committee. Right. It was in your committee on May 21st. Oh. It's at the oh, top good. of page 245. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm not going to, I believe you, but I, I don't remember the specific discussion on the words. Has anything been changed since then? And did we get a recommendation from the Lummi Island Ferry Advisory Committee? Come on up, Mr. Abart. I and I believed we got a recommendation this morning on our email. Yes, I spoke oh. at the end of the day uh, with Mike and uh, Mike McKenzie, Frank Abart, Public Works. And I believe he forwarded some information to the council sometime okay. today. And I know the council forwarded that to me. And if, I don't want to speak for what it said, but it, you know, essentially from my perspective, it's had the hearing, it went to the Public Works Committee. We had discussions. There's really two components, as one of the speakers earlier talked about, the 4555 component. And then there's another component of this ordinance that clarifies the ferry deficit reimbursement. And uh, that is the one that seems to be creating all of the confusion, all of the questions, uh, and all of the concerns. I don't know how legitimate it is to remove that piece from the ordinance if and when you vote on it. Uh, but it would be the department's preference that this be over tonight. <laughs> uh, this is even dragging back from 2012, and so either vote it yes or vote it no, or or please do something with it tonight. I appreciate that if, if I could. Okay, Councilmember Crawford. Yeah, I'll move it for approval. Councilmember Brenner. Well, that's the part that I and I the 5545. I get that, 
that's not changed. It's always been like that. But this part is the part that I'm... And did we make the changes? We talked about um, two things. We talked about change... Uh, yeah, now I remember. We talked about the thing, um, the ferry, the money that we get from the state, and should that be part of this formula. And I couldn't tell whether that has been changed. No, all this in this particular ordinance is just clarifying. It's not changing anything really. But now the, the 4555 is changing because right now the 45% that the road fund contributes to this right. ferry operation is calculated on a on the total expenses, but the 55% is calculated on the uh, what we call an adjusted total. So it's total expenses minus, I think, about three different items, and you come up with an adjusted total, and you calculate the 55% on that total. So in reality, for instance, in 2012, in reality, it was 50.7%, I believe, of, of the actual expenses. And so all this ordinance is requesting is that the 45% be calculated on exactly the same number that the 55% is calculated on. Oh. Yes, you've got the floor. Okay. Um, well, not to correct you, but the 4555 has always been 4555. How we get there is exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. And okay. that is not only confusing to me, oh. but there was a big change made to it a number of years ago that's really bothered me anyway, putting saying that the docks are now part of the, what are they, part of the 55%. And before, a dock is part of a road. And so there's so many things with this definition that haven't been changed that I wish would have. Plus, I am still, even the wording, though, I find it confusing. <coughs> so um, so I, I, have a, I, I have a question, Frank. So right. when the... Um, 55% is figured on a number, mm -hmm. and the 45% is figured on a different number. What happens to the amount that's not accounted for there? Who it's, pays that? It's absorbed by the ferry fund. So you have to always make sure there's enough money in the ferry fund. And, and we're finally getting back to that comfortable position where there is money uh, in the ferry fund. And the ferry fund is funded by... Fares? Well, it was, yeah, it was started with, uh, I don't know, about one and a half million dollars from a road fund, and now it is kept open by fares. So you always want to have a little bit of money left over, and I think it's built up to about 1.2 or 1.3 million dollars, and by ordinance we're supposed to be keeping it at, a, at a, I believe, 1.5 or a little over 1.5 million. So your suggested change to be calculating the 4555 off of the same amounts mm -hmm. would impact who? The ferry fund. Because it, would put, it would keep it from being drawn down? No, it, it would actually just make it even and easier to explain. But the road fund would be contributing a, about $80,000 a year less. But it's, it's more of a fair and reasonable and equitable and certainly a whole lot easier to explain. So the road people. fund would be contributing eighty thousand dollars less. So who would be picking up the eighty thousand dollars? The fares? It would be in the in the ferry fund. Okay. A separate fund designated for this particular operation. Does the road fund still contribute to the ferry fund? The, the road fund's contributing in many, many ways. <laughs> but yes, they'll be contributing that forty five percent. Now the difference is gonna be whether the forty five percent is calculated on the total expenses of the operation, which it is today, or calculated on the same number that the 55% is calculated on, which is much less, okay. which is very confusing and very hard to explain to people and which would be a good thing to eliminate some of that confusion. I'm not sure how or why it was ever set up that way in the first place. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Councilmember Kremen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Director Abart, what was the recommendation from the advisory committee? I, or was there one? From the LIFAC, I, I, I got the impression they were supportive of it, but I don't want to speak for them. That's a, a council committee, and uh, I think Mike is back there. If, Can we uh, ask Mike to come up? Will you the come chair up, Mike? Of that committee? Can I say one thing, too? 
Of course. That's I'm one of these people that has a hard time getting to emails the same day of a meeting when we've got something. Uh, you know, I'm always backed up like crazy. I didn't get to read it, and I'm hoping in the future the committee can get stuff to us at least three or four days ahead. Mike McKenzie, Lummi Island. We did a full presentation on it in committee hearing, and it's on the record and in your minutes. And so I typed that up last night at, at the request of somebody. But we had re, we had submitted that, I think, months ago. But but nonetheless, it's it. If you look at the document that Greg prepared, it's brilliantly written, and it's right there in front of you. It isn't confusing at all. And the, the hang-up over the years, <laughs> predating me, Frank, I think you'd agree, is over where the state um, vehicle, whatever the formal name is, the gas tax money is, is allocated. And so the check is written to the county, and then the county can decide whether to put it, in our case, in the road fund or the ferry fund, and w one of those checks goes into the you got to speak into the microphone, right? Mike. I, I'm just trying to clarify because it's very con it's very convoluted, but, but it isn't when you look at the state. What our committee did was examine all the state and county ordinances and the phrasing and look at the history of the, of the whole uh, 5545 when it was created, why it was created, the ferry fund when it was created, why it was created. And came up with you need to talk two, closer to that mic. And, and came up with to oppose um, the, the ordinance because it already says in the ordinance what it's intended to say. There's another aspect of it that is apart from this uh, proposal, and there's no need to go into that tonight. It has to do with, in a big picture, coming up with what is the, the most appropriate split. Uh, Mr. Councilmember Mann one time made a comment at our committee meeting that that's an arbitrary number and it, is. it really wasn't when it was formed but now it needs to be examined and to, but that's a whole different issue and it but it all centers on this same on this same ordinance so right now our feeling was that you should leave the ordinance in place as it is but the, the document that Greg gave you spells out what the state and county ordinances say about this Frank Abart. Frank Abart. Uh, I was just going to to ask them. So there's two pieces of this: the 4555 and the clarification. Does LIFAC have a position on the 4555s? It, it needs a long, hard, deep study. Okay, so you don't support you, you don't su and support no, that. Pardon me. LIFAC does not support the 4555 proposal in here. The way it's written. We don't support applying it to the same number, to put it in your language. That yep. sounds like they don't support it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The request is to apply it, the 55 to the same number. I mean, the 45 to the same number as the 55, and we're saying at this time that's not appropriate because there are other issues involved Goodness. in that. And, and, and it's very clear in the ordinance what why that works right now under the circumstances. Does that make sense? <laughs> I think really, so. <laughs> we'll take your word for it. Councilmember Crawford? Yeah, the 4555, I agree, is right for discussion. You know, we found out in that meeting, you go back to the minutes of the meeting, and, uh, you know, Skagit's on a 6535. Uh, Councilmember Mann raised a good point in that meeting. Uh, Mr. Monson was here. If you'll recall, Jeff Monson came and oh. spoke to us about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pierce County has a goal of 80-20, uh, but uh, they've only reached 75%. Uh, However, they include all capital improvements in the recovery. So um, we've got a good deal right now for the folks using the ferry. Relative, I'm trying to be careful how I say this, relative mm -hmm. to other systems in the state, acknowledging there's significant differences between the system. Uh, but I would not mind going back and visiting that with an eye for additional uh, fare box recovery in light that we have some significant expenses we're anticipating with the replacement of the Whatcom Chief, and we're going to have to look at every resource available Bingo. to the maximum extent. Bingo. Okay, 
Mr. Chairman. So, Councilmember anyway, Crawford, my, yeah, is your recommendation? I'm, we're off on a tangent here. I have a motion to approve the Public Works um, uh, request here. Okay. Councilmember Brenner? Well, now that you're reminding me about Jeff Munson being here, my recollection was the main reason, no, I'm fine, the main reason he was here and the main reason we had our discussion was about that money we get from the state. And um, I thought, I wish Councilmember Weimer was here tonight because he spoke about it quite a bit too. And I'm not comfortable doing this without, for one thing, having that amount from the state being calculated as part of the, the uh, money for the ferry, not for anything else but the ferry. And for, if we're going to revisit, I want to revisit the, uh, the docks. I mean, that was just somebody wanted some money, so they just decided to take the docks out of the, um, the uh, user fare part. I mean, put them in the user fare part. And that was a huge amount at the time. So it just seems like this is um, something that shouldn't happen until we get those kinds of issues resolved. And we didn't get the one resolved about um, the money from the state. I forget the name of it. It's some kind of... Very deficit reimbursement fund. Maybe that's mm -hmm. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to support it. Well, I'm kind of torn here because um, I hear what Mr. Abart is trying to do is to make a complicated issue less complicated. However, I see that there are many interrelated and um, more substantially complicated issues embedded in that issue. Um, so because we got a definite no from our LIFAC committee and um, you are charged with representing um, the people that live on Lummi Island and and the county. We've also got county representation on it. And you all live in the county. Sorry about that. Um, what I would like to do is, what I'm going to do is vote no on this tonight, but I do think that this discussion needs to happen. Um, I agree with Councilmember Crawford that the, that the whole discussion should happen as one piece and that we have a thorough review of the 4555 split and the way these costs are allocated and um, that we put in place a um, ordinance that is not complicated and makes sense for all of Whatcom County. So that's my stand on it. Councilmember Knudsen, did you have your hand up? Nope. Okay. Anybody else? All right. So this is an ordinance, and um, we'll go ahead and have the clerk call the roll. Ken Mann? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Bill Knudsen? No. Kathy Kirshner? No. Sam Crawford? Yes. Barbara Brenner? No. How's that for direction, Mr. Abart? It fails. It fails. All right, that motion fails uh, three to three with council members Brenner, Kirshner, and Knutson opposed. And then um, in, in other items tonight, let's bring up um, how we're going to give some direction to public works on where to go from here. They can put it in my committee. What? It didn't seem to have much effect the last time. We, those of us who voted yes should stay out of this. <laughs> All right. He doesn't want it in there because he's on the committee with me. Uh, item so number six is a we'll request confirmation of the county executive's appointment of Layton Overson to the Whatcom County Agriculture Advisory Committee. Okay, Councilmember Mann moves confirmation. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes six to zero, and we thank Layton for serving. And introduction items. Um, Is there a motion to accept items one through four? I move to accept items one through four and pull out item three. Councilmember Brenner moves to accept items one, two, and four. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, those items are accepted with a six zero vote. And Councilmember Brenner, item three. Yep. <coughs> I speak to it? 
Well, um, I, I don't think it's super time critical and to even introduce it right now with dry dock coming up for them and I just feel like we could do it and uh, we could introduce it at our first meeting in September for October or our first meeting in October for the end of October. I don't want anybody feeling left out on this. If it was time critical, I'd say let's do it. Councilmember Crawford? Well, I think it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. We could go ahead and introduce it and then move to not have the hearing on that date. I don't think it really matters if you want. Uh, I, I think what you had told me earlier was that you had asked Director Abart and he had no problem waiting. Was that, or was that the wrong issue? Oh, that was the other thing. That was the Life Act Committee. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, in any case, I mean, if we need to delay because of dry dock, I'm in favor of that. I just didn't know if you needed to, uh, you know, hold up the introduction of it. Introduction is well, just getting it scheduled for some future hearing. Okay. Uh, Frank Abart is coming up. Can we um, introduce this tonight and have the public hearing in October? You certainly can. You you set. You either decide to introduce it, and you decide when you have a hearing on it as well. Pretty much, essentially now. My motion Let, is to. Oh. Not introduce it. Could I just go ahead and do you have a good understanding of what it is? This is uh, one of the components related to the policy and procedure that's being developed right now for people who don't pay. Right. 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 And so, you know, I, I feel like I've done my part. I've got it to you for introduction, and I had scheduled some time to give you a more detailed evaluation. I think it was at that committee meeting for Public Works in September. So if you want to move all that. Right. To October yeah. or, or November, that's okay. it's in your park today. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Kremen. Thank you, Madam Chair, Director Abart. Do you have any kind of a guesstimate as to when you'd be able to come up with the ability to use credit cards? Well, yes, I heard that brought up earlier today, and uh, I wish it hadn't. Uh, but primarily, yes, we are working on that, and I will not, I will not put a date on. That's why I said <laughs> guesstimate. I mean, are we talking September, October, November, or June of next year? I do not know at this time because we're still evaluating the technology that's available. Yes, we have something we're looking at, and we really expect to be testing it in the last quarter of this year. But I don't have any idea whether it's going to work, and so... I don't want to sit here and tell you by Christmas we're going to have a fully functioning system. I, I don't feel comfortable telling you that. Well, maybe there's not enough effort being put into, uh, because we've been dealing with this issue for several months already. Yeah. And, I, and I, think, I, I think, you know, the time has come to deliver a request that's been made by this council for several months, if not over a year, and you know, to continually, you know, move the goalposts of when you, you know, when you're going to be able to implement this, the request that we've made pretty clear that we'd like to have the ability to use credit cards, um, and it's my understanding there are more than one options. For 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 doing so, uh, I just I think it's unacceptable to get a response from you, with all due respect, uh, that you you have no idea when you can uh, present us with a proposal that would be uh, satisfactory. I, just I gave you what I thought was a constructive honest response and I'm sorry that doesn't I thought it was pretty me. elusive and almost meaningless okay councilmember Crawford um, I suspect that the problem is doing a transaction via cell phone because that's probably what most people are thinking well shoot you could just get a card reader and I have used those before I can tell you working in a business in a place of business that has landlines connected up the credit card processing function goes down constantly and 
when you add in the added layer that, that you're trying to do it over a cell phone, I can assure you there will probably be problems. I don't disagree. It would be nice to have the testing done sooner rather than later. And there's probably, I would assume, some vendors that would like to sell us the system. But uh, in any case, I can also uh, speculate that this is going to be challenging, to say the least, to try to have a live interaction of a, of a credit card data transfer, a secure data transfer from the ferry when it's operating 20 times a day on open water in questionable cell phone reception. So I, I sort of relate to that. I, you know, but um, I did, was there a motion? Uh, yeah, uh, I moved no to remove it yeah, for no, to be removed. You, can't. It's, it's, you, you have to, yeah, the is. motion has to be action. There is no motion. Yeah, there is no motion. Oh, okay. I, I move to introduce this with the request that the work session and hearing on this be delayed past at least the first meeting in September 10th to give people time, or let's say past dry dock. Let's put it that way. So I, I move we introduce this item tonight. However, postpone the hearing and the work sessions until after dry dock uh, is over. Okay. Is there any further discussion on that? Councilmember Mann? Do you want to pick a specific date or no? I don't know what the dates of dry dock October. are. October 22nd and the 8th are our October meetings. but. So Maybe we should just leave it up to Dana because she knows all the yeah, other stuff. And I don't know when right okay. I just didn't know I if we could. I said October. I didn't say. I date. didn't know if we could do that, but that's fine. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, that passes five to one. All right. Other business. Well, I wanted to make a get a commitment. and try to get a resolution. And so we have a recommendation. It looks like someone from the Life Act Committee wants to take that on. Come on up, Mr. Brown. What are we doing? We're doing other business. This is my item. Councilmember, I need Greg Brown, you. welcome. Wait, excuse me, just process. What are you, That's what is the other business? I'm not, I'm not following what you're asking. The other business is I'm looking for some direction from the council on how we are going to um, actually make your recommendation to review the 4555 um, fare structure and also kind of pull together the uh, way it's being um, allocated so that we don't have a complicated, confusing system that nobody understands and everybody is upset about. And so we have a... Greg Brown, welcome. Can I, my comment is on your Ferry Advisory Committee, you have some very sharp individuals one who works for the Transit Authority and knows how fares work. We've got a gentleman that's from the county, city, uh, county. accounting yeah. department who knows how these processes work. But there is absolutely no communication between LIFAC and anybody else in this county. So until we get that, you're not going to get the LIFAC to help do anything because they're frustrated. That's Thank my you. comment. And that's kind of my point is to give some direction to the process. So... Is there, uh, Councilmember Brenner, in your Public Works Health and Safety Committee, can you put this on the agenda for discussion items so that you can sure. come up with some direction to give to both Public Works and to LIFAC on what items we want them to be working on and direction we want to go? Okay. That's all I needed to make sure my other business was taken care of there. Any other business, Councilmember Brenner? Yeah. Um when, oh, good, Mark's here. Um, I, I'd like to, if I'm requesting a presentation by the planning department regarding non-conforming use versus non-conforming building or whatever it is. There's two kinds of non-conforming. And I've been getting very confused about it. I've had people tell me that when they go to get loans, if they go, even if it's not a non-conforming use, if it's a non-conforming building, that they have a hard time, there's a problem getting a loan on a building that's non-conforming, which is probably now most of the buildings in Whatcom County. So um, I'm interested in making sure that there is enough of a distinction between the two. I thought there was, but I'm not a more, you know, lender or anything. So I just heard that. So. I would really like to hear more about the differences. So you're just making a request of the um, planning department staff? 
Yeah, if, if other, I can go through the exact. I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that there's quite a bit of confusion and we're being told that lenders, when they see that word non-conforming, it's non-conforming no matter what it is, so. Uh, good evening, Mark Personius, PDS. There are, yeah, there are non-conforming uses and there are non-conforming structures. Structures, so, right. Um, would you like that briefing at P&D committee? Is that the, okay. Should, do you want me to contact the executive? Because somebody's concerned that I'm going around the executive. Sure, that'd be great. Okay, be but great. I just want to get that out there, so. As, and as specific as you can about the particular concerns that we can do. Lenders, okay. and if you, that affects Could okay. you get those people to write down what the problem is so we can all understand? Okay. I guess. I've heard it from so many people, now i got to remember who I heard it from. But, yeah, I'll get it written down. Okay, any other business? Seeing none, any reports from council members? Council Member Crawford? No. Council Member Kremen? Thank you, Madam Chair. It's with uh, great sadness that uh, um, Whatcom County lost a, a, a very notable and uh, special individual over the weekend. His name is Dan Cheney, uh, Dr. Je Dan Cheney. Uh, he uh, succumbed to a long time illness, I believe, Saturday, and uh, he's the former president of the Bellingham Rotary Club, a uh, uh, well-known philanthropist within our community, and uh, there'll be a service for him, uh, I believe, this Sunday at the First Congregational Church on Cornwall. I don't know the specific time, and uh, I think that uh, the Bellingham Herald will be doing an obituary probably tomorrow or the next day, and uh, Anyone who's inclined to do so uh, might want to attend to celebrate the life of Dr. Dan Cheney. Thank you. Councilmember Kremen. Councilmember Brenner. Well, on a little bit more of an uplifting note, um, I had a crisis happen, and this woman stopped and helped me, and um, it was in the middle of a crisis, so I didn't even get to find out her last name. Her first name is Mitzi, and there's, I hope there's not too many Mitzis in Whatcom County. I would really like to be able to thank her. She was one of those people who just saw something and somebody needed help, and she was there. And I'm just so grateful that there are people like that in Whatcom County, but I'd like to thank her if I can ever find out her last name. Okay. And I just want to give a huge big shout out to the EMS system in Whatcom County, as well as the hospital staff at St. Joe's. They were <laughs> excellent. They treated me very well. And um, I'll just report since this happened at a council meeting, I am fine and back to business as usual. But thank you to the EMS system and to our wonderful hospital staff. Council Member Mann. I actually do have a report. Uh, I think one of the important things we can do as council members is give some visibility to programs that are out there in the county. And I attended the Project Homeless Connect, which is a, uh, an annual event with hundreds of volunteers and hundreds and hundreds of homeless folks who need help. And all of the service providers in Whatcom County come together in one spot, haircuts, dental care, doctors helping you get ID or getting your kids enrolled in school. I served food because that's really all I'm capable of doing in, in that, within that setting. And uh, just so many amazing volunteers, a lot of sad stories and people really needing help. But from DSHS to the Opportunity Council to the Volunteer Center, so many good folks volunteering and uh, helping out and, and making a difference. So Project Homeless Connect, I, I really recommend to people to sign up next year and volunteer because you really get a lot out of it as, as a volunteer. Thank you. Councilmember Knudsen. Well, I also have a report on a, uh, an agency or entity in Whatcom County called Engedi Ministries. And un, unbeknownst to me was... Um, the amount of uh, of our youth that are 
sold into the, the sex industry. And the average age is 13 years old for these kids. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge need, and the numbers that were out there um, were very frustrating to me. But uh, they're taking some of these, mainly women, out of that industry and, and trying to educate them because, number one, they've been taken away from their homes and, and have maybe a seventh grade education at best. Get them off drugs because it seems like that's the first thing that these predators do is get them addicted to something, drugs or alcohol, and um, then try to build back their self-esteem. And it just is sad but true that it's a huge, huge uh, problem out there. And uh, I'm just glad to see some folks actually dealing with it. Thank you, Councilmember Knudsen. All right, with that, we are adjourned.